Hey everyone, welcome back. I am the Electrical Code Coach. Today we find ourselves in Article 422. And Article 422 is all about appliances. If we're being honest, one of the most important things that we get to use all these electrons for are appliances. They're really what makes the world go round. It keeps us more comfortable, gives us tools to use, all of these different things that make our life easier and more efficient. And the code has a lot to say about appliances. And today's case study is a perfect example of why we need to get together every single day at 9 a.m. and talk about the code. Because there's so many parts of the code and it's so dense. And what we're trying to do here is shrink the code book to where we're able to open up the code book and we know these things. And today's a perfect example, and I'll explain why. First, let's read the code. It says, we're looking at 422.13, storage type water heaters. And this is what we're talking about here, your average storage type water heater that you would find inside your home. It says a fixed storage type water heater that has a capacity of 120 gallons or less shall be considered a continuous load for the purpose of sizing branch circuits. That's going to include sizing your wire and your overcurrent protection. And the reason I say that this code is so important, it looks like just a couple lines, because if you go back to Article 100 and you didn't know this code and you looked at this appliance and you said, hey, is this thing expected to run for three or more hours? Because that's the definition of a continuous load, if it's expected to run at its maximum current for three or more hours. Well, that really kind of leaves it up to the electrical inspector to make that call. They might look at a water heater and say, mm, I don't think it's going to run for three or more hours, or it's expected to. And you might get another inspector that says, hey, I think it is expected to run for three or more hours. So whether you think a water heater should be a continuous load or shouldn't be, this code right here supersedes that. It says, hey, we're telling you that if you have a water heater that's 120 gallons or less, you're going to have to consider as a continuous load for the purpose of sizing its branch circuit, which includes its wire and its overcurrent device. Now let's go ahead and take a real world example. So let's imagine we had a 4,500 watt, 80 gallon tank, and we're trying to figure out how to size the wire and the breaker. What we're gonna do is take our 4,500 watts and divide it by our system voltage, and in this case, it's 240 volts. And when we get that number there, that's our starting value. A lot of people might think, hey, you know, I can just go size my wire and my breaker off this value, but it's just not true. According to this code, we must take it and multiply that by 1.25. And what that is doing is increasing that value by 25%. And then we're going to go size our wire and we're going to size our overcurrent protection. So let's look at this specific item here. Remember, always work with your electrical inspector. All work should be done legally, morally, and ethically, and you should be licensed before you perform any of this work. So. With that being said, but let's go ahead and size this imaginary, you know, the circuit and overcurrent protection for this imaginary water heater that we have here. So what we're going to do is we're going to first size our overcurrent protection. So we head to 240.6A. We're going to go up and select the next standard size. And in this case, it is a 25 amp breaker. Then we're going to head to 310.15B16 in the 2017 or 310.16 in the 2020. And we're going to get in there and we're going to size our wire. We're going to come down. Let's imagine that we're using Romex. So we're going to come over to Romex. We're going to slide down and we're going to use a 10 gauge wire. So in this specific case, this specific scenario, we're going to end up with a 25 amp breaker and we're going to end up with 10 gauge wire to make sure that this is code compliant. Remember, don't ever repeat anything in these videos, just use it for educational purposes only. I am the Electrical Code Coach, and my bargain is, is that these videos will add value to you, and you will in turn turn around and add value to others. If you ever need anything from me, you can always email me at electricalcodecoach at gmail.com. Let's get to it. Hey, y'all.